Check one, check one, check one, two. YouTube crew, today I'm going to tell you how to EQ since. Ooh. Right, surgical EQing. Let's dive straight in. So what I've done is strip back the project so it's nice and simple, just a kick drum, even low passed so it's not distracting, and a synth. What I want to do first of all is show you a before and after, and then I tell you how and why I did it. Oh, look at that, much more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes before. Did you hear that sort of whistly sound that the EQ was removing? That is usually the point of surgical EQing. It's called surgical EQing when you have a super surgical approach, basically a high resonance or Q factor. See how the higher the Q number is, the more surgically precise it is, like a surgeon. I'm doing surgical EQ. Look at this. Step one, notice there's a bit of a whistly sound. What you'll find is some chord combinations with certain presets will give a whistly resonance sort of peak, whereas other chord combinations, even within the same preset, won't. So it's something that just sort of randomly, or well, not technically randomly, but it sometimes appears, you get these little whistly resonances just popping out of your presets and chord combinations. And so step one, Notice it very importantly, don't go looking to remove things that you can't actually hear. Otherwise you'll end up just removing bits of the sound or just doing random surgical EQ. So definitely an important first step, make sure you can hear something, a whistly or resonant peak. And then step two is to counterintuitively grab a surgical EQ node. So quick reminder, Q value super duper high. So it's surgical, AKA resonance. And then you flip it. Upside down, upside down. I am upside down. Also, you want the surgical EQ bit to be upside down. This is so you can isolate the frequency and pin down precisely where this resonant -y, peaky, whistly sort of frequency is coming from. Because unless you've been doing producing for many, 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 many years, and even if you have been doing so, it's really difficult to hear a resonant -y, whistly, peak frequency thing and go, aha, that is 2.496 khz. Hurts. I mean, you, you, it's, it's impossible. So what you need to do is grab one of these and then, in fact, if you have a chord progression, I mean, and this is kind of a chord progression, but sometimes you have longer chord progressions. If it's just on a certain chord, you hear this, it can be useful just to loop through a section where you can definitely hear it. So there you go. Just cause this final bit, for example, that doesn't actually have the whistly peak. So I'll keep it simple and just loop through that. And then here's the trick. What you do is once you've flipped your EQ node upside down, you sweep through until you hear the same frequency that you've kind of half remembered, memorized using your brain that you've picked out. Uh, I can do that sentence better. So you sweep this through until the resonant peak, the frequency that's annoying you, becomes super annoying, like crazy loads, and then you've isolated it or you've found it. So I'll show you. None of those, none of those, getting close though. Too high. See how we've now found it? These are all too low, these are all too low. So we sweep through. Ooh, there you go, there you go. That, I, I pretty much found it. I was shouting because it's loud in my ears. Now we have found it. Here's the trickaroonie. You flip it upside down again. So just grab the gain or memorize a number and then sort of turn it upside down.
problem solved, I'm a genius. Joking aside, it's a cool idea, right? And naturally, the more time you spend sort of narrowing down very, 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 very precisely the frequency you want to remove, the more precisely you can remove it. Uh, so maybe it's not quite 3.35, maybe it's 3.31 or 3.29 or, or 3.36 or 7 or something. So you probably want to spend more than four seconds finding the peak and then turning it upside down. But even if you're not precisely right, it's still most of the time does the job. So you don't even need to be super precise necessarily. But um, yes, that is the general idea. Part of the challenge here, in fact, probably in my opinion, the most difficult part of the challenge is to locate the resonant frequency, the annoying whistly thing in the first place. So do I have any tricks for that? Um, Kind of. I suppose the more you do this, the more you get better at just as, as you're producing, realizing, ah, oh, there's a resonant peak whistly sort of noise there. I should remove that. Whereas maybe when you first start producing, you don't really notice it because you're just focusing on the, the other stuff in the, the track. Um, also, speakers. Some speakers will reproduce frequencies in different ways or can balance your frequencies differently. So maybe, maybe through one set of speakers, you don't hear a certain whistly resonance, but through another set of speakers or headphones, you do. So definitely A, B, different headphones, monitors, speaker setups to make sure you haven't missed any of these whistly frequencies. And also very importantly, don't go necessarily just looking at the spectrum analyzer and removing everything that looks like a resonant peak, because then you'll potentially just remove everything. The idea here is you're removing or maybe just attenuating peaks that aren't contributing anything cohesive and coherent to the main thing in the sound. So to me, that whistly resonant peak isn't really, it's not a part of the main harmonic balance. Like you can see if I just there. Uh, So take a look at what peak this is. As I turn this off and on, take a look at what peak this is attenuating. Fancy word for reducing, attenuating or removing. And notice how it's not even sticking up crazy loads. I mean, it's definitely sticking up a little bit. You can see it's got this little head poking out like a diglet. Or a, yeah, it's just a diglet, it's, it's only one, not a dog trio. So it's kind of sticking his head out. But then again, looking through here, other ones are sticking their heads out too. Like, you've got that one over there, you've got that one there, you've got a little dog trio action there. Uh, so you've got little guys sticking their heads out. And it's not necessarily, I've got something now. It's not necessarily a problem that when you're looking at a spectrum analyzer, sometimes a, a peak a harmonic, that sometimes a harmonic or a peak will, or a frequency will kind of be sticking out. That by itself isn't necessarily a problem. It's when that thing sticking out doesn't feel like it's a part of the main sound for whatever reason. Could be a quirk of the detuning in the synth preset. Could be a quirk of the audio algorithms used to generate the sound. Could be just a weird quirk of the dissonance and the way all the different harmonics interact with each other because of the different chord progressions and stuff. So it's, it's quite difficult to explain how and why these things appear but they sometimes do. And if you spot one, remember, only if you spot one, remove it using surgical EQ. Traditional music theory would suggest whenever doing a surgical EQ, you want to use a digital EQ instead of a fancy analog one. Whereas for say gentle pushes here and there, maybe a bit of uh, this action, for those sorts of EQ changes, that would be when you'd prefer say an analog EQ over digital. Now I do say, that is a deep. I do say that that's the traditional approach because, of course, you can always use analog things to do surgical EQing if you like, and you can always use digital to do bits and bobs here and there too. So it's not like a rule you have to live and die by, but in general, it's worth bearing in mind in case you're curious that for surgical EQing, it's typically best to use a digital EQ, whereas for these gentle boosts and tonal tweaks, that's when you might want a more characterful analog guy. Knowledge. Power, fun, excitement, and yes, fantastic. That's been a look at surgical EQing of since my name has been Multiplier. And I will catch you guys on the Flippity flip.
that wasn't very smooth at all, was it? I can do better. And I will catch you guys on the... Flippity flip. Much better. Much better, that. Improving. Improving flippity skills. Knowledge.